We're back with some more Roaring Twenty. <laughs> Is it roaring yet? Of course it's not, because it's not that type of a roar. We are talking about a time of tremendous optimism, yet a healthy dose of fear. Optimism and fear. Social media is a great place to share this. Hit that like button, and if you haven't already, subscribe. What are you waiting for? Let's start with optimism. They call it the Roaring Twenties because it's an age that sees a lot of, we just won the war, patriotism. It shows that we are a world leader, which is almost unmatched throughout the world. And this is one of the reasons why we had the edge up in World War I and we joined the war late. So we were a little fresher than the other countries. But great production and this necessity to make production better during the war, improve production to the point where Commercial goods after the war were able to be made efficiently and cheaply. New inventions. There were a tremendous amount of new inventions in the Roaring Twenties that changed life. I mean, just think about things that not only made things easier, but it absolutely changed the way you, are, you live. Automobile, the assembly line, the toaster. The, the electric iron, the refrigerator, vacuum cleaner, traffic lights, best things since sliced bread, bread slicer. Kool-Aid was invented in the 20s, Kool-Aid. The radio, television, and the process that freezes food. Is it roaring yet? A lot of these things were so revolutionary, they altered not only your lifestyle, but the economy, the automobile, being produced on an assembly line lowered the price that average citizens were able to afford a car. And now that the car is being mass produced, a number of people have them. We have new industries. The new industries like gas stations, the new industries like travel, uh, tourism are born because you really don't have heavy tourism without cars and eventually roads and interstate highways. Refrigerator, the vacuum cleaner, these things are changing daily life. So the chores that women are, are commonly, uh, traditionally doing in this time period, and you know, not all of it was sexist, some of it was just balancing uh, of the day, and the laborious task that people had to do, there was a division of labor. Um, but as women have some of these domestic tasks become easier, there's free time. And how do they spend their free time? As we talked about before in the progressive era, era women's clubs, they also have different pastimes. The radio was invented. And with unions, men and women have a finite work day and they were able to fight for certain freedoms. And what do they do with their extra time when the uh, horn sounds or the buzzer rings and they punch out of the factory? Now we have team sports that become popular. We can go home and listen to the radio. People heard the president for the first time in this era. I could listen to someone tell a story or act something out on the radio. Motion picture shows up in a big way. Eventually animation. And, you know, a few years later, we get sound in the movies as well. We have a fake isolationism. After the war, we're like, hey, you know what? Europe is crazy. We don't want anything to do with Europe's problems, so let's retreat away from Europe's problems. 
But the funny thing is, it was really just a sentiment, it was really just a feeling, and it was somewhat fake in nature because we continue to be connected to those European countries economically, and we had their interest in mind because not only were we trading, but we, we literally wanted to prevent another horror like World War I from happening. Didn't work, did it? Now, let's talk about some of the ugly things. All this patriotism and all this desire for isolationism created a reinsurgence of nativism. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Nativism eh, could be a good thing with small doses, but to be completely honest, most of the time we've seen big outpours of nativism, it's a very, very ugly thing. So when we talk nativism, we're looking at Ku Klux Klan. We're looking at... Uh, uh, immigration quotas. We're looking at people discriminating. Hey, listen, the Ku Klux Klan is getting more exclusive at this time period. Now they don't just hate African Americans. They also hate uh, a variety of immigrants from Europe. They also hate Mexican immigrants um, coming across the southern border. Wait, Mexican immigrants are not just a new issue? No, I mean, it's been an issue off and on throughout American history, and this is one of those time periods. Uh, the Red Scare is where we are afraid of the things that are going on politically in Europe. In Europe, because of revolution, because of World War I, because of uh, economic problems, because of a lot of junk that's going, over, going on over in Europe, we see communism take hold in certain countries, and we see fascism take hold in other countries. What is this Red Scare? This is when people were almost tried and discriminated against because of their countries of origin or people missing understanding their political ideas. Now, yes, yeah, some of these people were legitimate communists, but many of them were just, that is an outsider, he's too Italian, he's too Russian, he's too whatever. Sacco and Vanzetti scenario is a perfect example where harsh punishments um, are placed on someone and it's very hard to say that their ethnicity, their nationality, or fear of their political um, affiliation didn't have something to do with it. Everybody could be victim, everybody could be a communist. So people were very, 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 very afraid of sounding too social and communistic. People in the movie industry, people who were too progressive, watched what they said because they didn't want to be misinterpreted. Prohibition. Hey, you know what? The progressive era is not that far away and the temperance movement has been pushing and pushing for decades and now they have a win because we can make people more productive. We can keep families together. We can improve the economy if we just get this horrible vice out of the public sector. Listen, alcohol was illegal to produce and distribute and sell. There are a lot of weird caveats in that. Alcohol was okay medicinally. People in many states were allowed to consume the alcohol that they had stored away, that they had stored away, that they hadn't drank yet, but the production and distribution was illegal. Now, because of those economic arguments and because, hey, you know what, we could lower crime. A lot of people commit crimes when they are intoxicated. This is actually true. The opposite actually happened. Crime rose because alcohol gave organized crime the money, the support they needed to get very organized. Pay off police officers, pay off judges, pay off politicians, pay off people with power. So not only were they able to run their illegal businesses, gambling, prostitution, racketeering, bootlegging, but they had the structure that it was hard to take them down. <laughs> Is it roaring yet? They were laundering their money through businesses. They had people on their payroll that would look the other way when they did things illegal. We know some of the big names, Lucky Luciano, Al Capone, Bugs Moran, we could go on. These people were glamorized for a time until the newspapers actually started printing some of the murders and so forth that they seen. And when people seen the reality of what this organized crime was, 
It did change many people's opinion, but it wasn't a complete shift because many of these organized crime syndicates did a lot of charity work and took care of the people in underprivileged communities. While nativists may have been operating under the law, these illegal, these illegal mobs and organizations would take care of the less fortunate, take care of these immigrants that the legal community shunned. Now the president wasn't free of some of this ugly side, some of the fear side of the Roaring Twenties. President Harding, President Coolidge, these people were very laissez-faire presidents. And some of that laissez-faire policy is what revved up business for this, this very economically prosperous time. There were new inventions, there was a very efficient production system. This was the perfect time for laissez-faire economics. But it failed to respond when things went sour. And we cannot forget, the Harding administration was plagued, plagued, plagued with scandal. The most famous scandal, maybe, of this period of American history is the Teapot Dome scandal, where his appointed staffers sold government reserve oil to line their own pockets. This was just one of a number of scandals. President Harding thought himself to be a stand-up guy, but he couldn't control his friends and uh, uh, staffers. Also, you have this kind of uneasiness with how fast the world is changing. How fast the world is changing. All these new inventions, are they good? All this new style, is it okay? For girls to wear skirts above their knees, for people to be dancing and gyrating in these different ways, to be watching African Americans on stage performing, uh, for our communities to slowly come together, should we push them apart? These changes in the world, these new inventions, these new styles, what was going on was scaring a lot of people. I mean, the music purists sometimes thought that improvisation was bad for music. Follow the sheet music. Well, there you have it. The Roaring Twenties, a time of great optimism, but also great fear. What do you think? Was this fear warranted? We're in the future looking back on it. Was there some bad things that came out of that time? We know the Great Depression. We know of the rise, um, the second reinsurgence of the Ku Klux Klan. We know the horrors of the Red Scare and the problems that came from various fears and reacting to them. But it was a great time. We've got jazz music. We got inventions that we improved upon and created the camera that I'm looking at and the scenarios that we enjoy and we and the entertainment we have today. What do you think about the Roaring Twenties? Did it really roar? Let me know in comments. Always like, share, subscribe. Ask me any comment and questions. We'll see you soon. Take care of yourself.